Welcome back to Media in Focus. We're assessing the media coverage of the Manila hostage crisis. With us, ABS-CBN's Maria Ressa and George Carino, the CMFR's Berhel Santos, and Cebu Congressman Gabriel Kisumbing. Um, you know, I've been monitoring Twitter uh, since yesterday, entire day today. Uh, we've seen some friends uh, uh, tweeting and that were very strong opinions about what we did uh, in media uh, to cover this event. And some of them saying that, uh, yes, there are guidelines that have been uh, publicized uh, so many times, Pointer Institute guidelines for handling for or months. covering a mm -hmm. uh, hostage situation. And I remember you tweeting and say sometimes it doesn't apply because these are guidelines for Western countries. Explain a little bit. Western countries mm -hmm. where law enforcement officials actually give very concrete guidelines. Okay. Having said that, that doesn't mean that we can't take the general principles, which is what we've done. Mm -hmm. um, in, in our instance, for example, uh, we received um, George yeah. got an interview with a hostage taker. All right. I got it at past two in the afternoon and uh, I talked to the guy, the hostage taker, mm -hmm. and he told me that uh, if authorities wouldn't accede mm -hmm. to his request mm -hmm. or to his demand, yeah. something will happen by 3 p.m. And, and, and we have to remind people who might not be familiar with what the guidelines of the Pointer Institute supposed to be are. One of them includes a uh, word of caution, do not interview the hostage taker. Do not talk to the hostage taker and do not publicize his demands. So, in fact, is that a guideline that we should have avoided, George? Uh, that we should have followed, George? Uh, that we should we not have talked to the hostage taker? We did. I got the information. Have we I ever? In this country? Have we have, ever? Have journalists ever not interviewed talking? the no. hostage taker? It seems to me the least dangerous thing to do. The least dangerous thing to do? Yes. Interview the hostage uh, holder. So what? What mm -hmm. can he tell you? And mm -hmm. what can you tell him? Mm -hmm. Exactly, but uh, you know, Congressman Kizumbing, um, I don't know exactly just how well versed you are with the, the way journalists think or even uh, what they believe in. But you know, coming from uh, the outside of, outside of the industry, do you think that we should have interviewed the hostage? Take the interview with the hostage. Uh, you know, personally, I feel that uh, nego the negotiation, any negotiation when it comes to situations like this, should first of all be handled by trained negotiators. Mm -hmm. uh, we understand that he wanted he demanded for media media coverage for this however in many cases around the world for similar situations they do not allow anybody but trained negotiators to handle mm. there's a reason for this uh, trained negotiators usually have a background in psychology mm -hmm. they usually have proper training mm. uh, for situations like this okay for hell you say there's the no harm in talking no, to the, the idea is not to negotiate just the just idea is to get a story get a story and, and George <laughs> that idea ran yeah. in my mind uh, yeah. Makikipag-negotiate ba ako sa kanya? O he just want to listen to what he wants to say. And he said that he, he just want to air his grievances. Okay, mm -hmm. then talk. Mm -hmm. He was just talking. And uh, I, I, I was just, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're just uh, like uh, egging him on to say more, but not necessarily agreeing with what he had to say. And after that conversation, I asked the office, do we air this or not? Mm -hmm. And the decision was? Not to air this until negotiations are done. All right, and so we did. Um, ABS-CBN aired that conversation with Rolando Mendoza after the hostage situation. You have to understand the situation. Uh. We agree. Um, the Pointer Institute guidelines are an ideal. They, it comes in an ideal situation. Unfortunately, this country has had a history <laughs> of journalists covering and reporting on hostage takers. Yeah. Um, but in this instance, even after George had it, we said, we do not want to be negotiating this publicly, so hold it. It's a scoop, mm -hmm. but we won't air it. Mm -hmm. Not until after the negotiators have done their job. So we did delay something in the sense that uh, we had information, to we delayed it. Really. Other, others uh, ran his interview, and I hope George was not upset. He actually understood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure ABS-CBN has more experience with hostage taking than Pointer. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I'm saying the thing there is that it's different from country to country. The mm -hmm. Each, yes, each exactly. press group, each the journalists have their own history. Yes. Yeah. And we must take where we are and bring it forward. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to ask uh, Congressman Kisumbing, I mean, you make a bill and somehow it also rides on some popular sentiment that the media should partly be controlled when it comes to situations like this. But do you think your bill does conform to what media in this context, in this society, has to operate in. Absolutely. Uh, what we're talking about here are uh, 
but actions that could have potentially ended the hostage crisis. We, at that time, certainly none of us could have said that they would have been that ineffective mm -hmm. in their breach of the bus. What we knew was that there was a police uh, entry on the bus that was about to be, that was about to be uh, attempted. Mm. Uh, even in the Philippines, where the rules may be different from certain countries, and we understand that, even the 2007 Broadcast Code of the Philippines uh, says that no vital information should be broadcast in a crisis or a hostage situation, which is why we feel that when it comes to a situation like this, tactically, for the police and the military, this is absolutely vital information. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they could have potentially been ambushed. You know, and, 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 and maybe uh, mm -hmm. now Congressman Kasumbing uh, getting more confident that his bill uh, would somehow get support because President Aquino himself uh, early this morning in a Malacanang news briefing said he also was disappointed with the way media covered this event. He was not disappointed with Mr. Ubredo or any other of his of members of his, of his cabinet over there? <laughs> was <Maria>? he? <laughs> Again, the reality is that journalists were observers. We were not actors. We were not in charge of the situation. If we were the crisis committee, if we were the crisis commanders, we would have done certain things differently. Maybe someone else would have done things differently. Um, again, look at it. There were no emergency measures put yes. in place. By 5 p.m., we knew darkness was coming. Nighttime was coming. No one contacted the journalists on the ground and us to actually give us, you know, tell us what will happen if it moves forward. With darkness comes the greater possibility of violence. What happens then? No one called us. We waited for some kind of of guidance in it and in what happened was something that ha happened quickly it was miscalculation on the part of the people who had control um, again if we did not know at that point that he had a television in there uh, on the radio the hostage taker did say he was watching uh, a TV I found that out later on and he wasn't watching mm. ABS-CBN mm. um, I also <laughs> wanted to know that because I wanted yeah. to know to yeah. the extent of how we may have influenced events. Mm -hmm. He wasn't watching ABS-CBN. Having said that, that's still no... Um, what request did we get from authorities? We got one. To and shut it down was the lights. indirect. Yeah. An indirect request that came through one of our reporters. My number, I am very reachable. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> you know, um, the, the request was to shut down the lights. We shut down our lights. We were the only ones to shut down our lights, and our video looked darker, but that's okay. The problem seems to me not the, not the, not, not the absence of any law, but, but the absence of police control, proper police control. The police could have done enough under the law but you know what, to Verhel, have prevented something you know like what, this. When, when you have the viewing public uh, um, now um, in imposing their sentiments uh, on us, <laughs> and they're yeah. saying that, come on guys, you don't need the PNP to control you, you're the media, you should know better. <laughs> Do we have to know better? Are we actually supposed to know better than the police? Uh, un unfortunately, unfortunately, everybody's a genius actor. Everything yes. Does. But uh, given the situation, when, when you're there, okay. when you're standing there in, in, in the middle of everything, uh, guns blazing, people running, and uh, something happening, any newsman in his right mind would trigger his camera to shoot. Mm. Otherwise, the next day he loses his job. Mm. Well, that's a really sad commentary on the police. Mm. If you say anything like that. But what's on worse? On power in this country. It, it